My love for cricket developed when I was very young. I grew up in a place called Tom Price, way up north of WA. Played cricket, had a little bit of talent for it and just never stopped. I got involved in the state programs at WA and got to 16 when I made my debut for WA for the senior side and ever since then I just haven't looked back. I'm a massive cricket nuffy. It's what I feel like my purpose is and back then I, I would do loads, I would train every day, I would play as much as I could and you kind of don't really know how to give yourself time away from the game when you're that young. And then obviously the older I got the more professional women's cricket became which meant the demands of the sport um, grew even more and we became actual cricketers that I would put as my job title. Winning the WNCL for WA in 2018-19 season, it was amazing. It was the best thing that could have ever happened to us as a group. We'd worked really hard to get there and it felt like everything just paid off at that point. And winning the WBBL was also extremely exciting. To have 15,000 pack out Optus Stadium um, just all on the bottom floor was unbelievable. I'm really grateful to be a part of that, um, but I had my struggles along the way. I just started not really feeling myself at cricket. The things I used to love, like waking up early, going, getting to the gym early, um, being around all the girls, being at the WACA, playing the game, like I just loved all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden I just wasn't anymore. And there was a couple of training sessions that I just remember, I just had tears in my eyes and I just thought, why, why am I feeling like this? It kind of became a point where it was like my value as a person was determined by how well I did on the cricket field, which is just not how it is at all. And it was complete burnout of cricket. Like I've been in the same program, the same environment, very similar people from the age of 15, 16. I was not doing things that were filling my cup up and basically pushing myself to burnout and it was just this cycle that just kept going and going and there's only kind of so much that you can take over the years. I wanted to really do something that was going to benefit me and, and actually change the way I was feeling and get my love back for the sport, which is then why I decided at the end of that season to not renew my contract and um, to just completely go find myself again. I went over to England. I went on a, a big holiday for about a month. Did things that fill up my cup, basically. I did a lot of sightseeing on the weekends. I met a lot of new people. I got into really good routines, like I started journaling. If I was struggling to sleep at, at night, I wasn't just staying up all night thinking. I would just write it down on a piece of paper next to the bed. And I got a lot better at doing the little things well like that to take care of myself. I listened to a lot of podcasts and it just made me realise that like I wasn't alone in this and it's completely normal to have ups and downs with your mental health and your well-being and I don't have to let it get to me being at my lowest point before I spoke up and said anything and I wish I'd listened to all of that much earlier on. I started getting back into cricket very slowly, playing over in England. It was very much at my own pace, very cruisy. I joined up with the team, played it because I loved it, got stuck into the season and really thoroughly enjoyed it. For me, I think just having loads of other things other than cricket to do really helps me and having less time at cricket actually made me get the fire back when I was at cricket. Balance, balance, yeah. Coming back to WA was terrifying to be honest. I felt like some people might have just thought I walked away because it all got too hard. That didn't happen and it was nice to get back for a couple of months and then be asked to actually play for WA that season. I just was a completely different version of myself. I just took cricket for what it was which is a game. The ups and downs of life get all of us and I think I'm a lot better now at the down days don't quite last as long as what they used to and they don't put me in the same 
mindset as they used to and um, it's a lot easier to speak to people that are close to me and just understand that that's just a, a tough day like we all have and it's just about putting the right processes in place I believe um, for me to keep me in a good place because we all go through the struggles of life. I started a podcast basically just to help people hear all the stories of the great people that I know. Hi and welcome to another episode of Strength in Vulnerability. Today we're talking to one of my favourite teammates. From the For me when I was really struggling, listening to people's stories was a massive benefit to me and it made me realise truly that everyone does have a story to tell and I think it just got me away from having the surface level chat with people that doesn't mean anything and that's why I love sitting down with someone for 40 minutes and like really delving into their life. Sharing my story and sharing loads of other people's stories hopefully will help others speak up and um, put their mental health and well-being first.